Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show and Synergy Cafe. And I've got a new friend, a fellow colleague magician. His name is Jeff Evans. You there, Jeff? I am. Hi, Brad. Greetings, loud and clear. What, where, where are you located? I'm in Olympia, Washington, about an hour south of Seattle. Olympia, isn't that where Hercules used to be? A Mount mm. Olympia? <laughs> that would be a different Olympia, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember Hercules? I'm not that old. He was okay. before my time. Yep, there was <laughs> Thor and Captain America and Hercules put a ring on and he would dun, dun, dun. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, superheroes. Yeah. Well, you're a superhero. I looked at some of your videos. Looks like you've been doing this magic thing for a while. I started doing it when I was like five years old, something like that. But uh, mm. you Then you, you got me beat. I started when I was like 12. Well, you're, stay, you're staying focused though. I kind of get off on other tangents and things. <laughs> what kind of what what do you like where's your wheelhouse do you like to do the close-up you doing the illusion show comedy what do you the def the thing i definitely do not do is illusions i don't have any assistance i don't have <laughs> big panel vans of equipment so i do a little bit of everything from strolling magic to private parties to stand up for corporate events sure. fairs and festivals i do school assemblies for kids so it's a pretty wide range but just not the really big stuff. That's kind of how we got into it. We had two girls and 10 doves and two rabbits and a little van and we did just primarily regional locally here, but the girls got older and got boyfriends and it got to be too much taking care of all that stuff and lugging the heavy equipment and we just kind of separated and uh, did. Uh, That's a lot of work putting on a, a big show like that. It is, uh, and uh, you know, you, you lose the love for it when you do all the work. It's kind of like marketing. You know, you got to. People don't realize how much work goes into the marketing and the booking and contracts and follow-ups and all that. And they think you get paid all that to be on the stage for twenty or forty minutes. Well, right. Yeah, I will. Yeah, the that. mark. <laughs> the marketing is the real business. Exactly. That's the that's the business of the show business. What what areas do you, do you travel wherever? If someone says, "Hey, could you get on a plane to come over to Sydney, Australia?" You do that, or try and well, I could. However, well, of course, right now most of the performances are virtual, which right. is great. Being able to do this, meeting with you, never I never would have even thought of doing it a year ago. I really hadn't done anything over video or Zoom or Skype or anything. But in the past nine months, I've gotten used to doing everything from school assemblies to little private parties to corporate events. And it's really been working out nice. Yeah. So the, the, the pandemic thing kind of made everybody an international performer, didn't it? <laughs> Myself, now, I when still I was have doing it. I like to stay, I like to go home after the gig rather than hotels and all that stuff. So I tried to. Stay oh home. yes. For in-person performing, I try and stay within five hours of home in general. Yeah. 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 And do, do you focus on anything specific like corporate events or associations or you kind of just take whatever comes in? I kind of take whatever comes in. I do have different niches that I market to during the school year, during the weekdays. I love doing motivational magic assemblies. So I have a science themed show, a reading motivational show and a bully prevention show. Okay. And of course, for fun family nights. During December, I do a ton of corporate holiday parties not so much the rest of the year. I mean, I'm, I do them. I just don't do as many uh, weekends and weekends tend to be more of the private parties like birthdays, that sort of thing. So it kind of oh, and then during the summer, I do a lot of summer reading programs for libraries in June and July. Yeah. And then August and September, it's more county fairs and festivals. Do they do the lock ins there, the senior parties, the graduation parties? I do a few of those in early June, yes, and but not months. as many. Yeah, not like a hypnotist. I'm not doing two a night. Yeah, I got a hypnotist friend here that he'd do six of them. Yeah. Wow. Oh, he do. He's working lots. He was to do a dry run, to go from gig to gig to gig to gig, and he part of his contract. He had a parking spot that was right by the door, so he's in and out, and he would just back to back all day. Wow, that's crazy. It is. It's a little bit crazy, but uh, he's very good at it. So, very cool. 
where, where do you think you're going with your magic? You think you, you, you want to be on uh, like fool us or you looking to do a like touring, get into a niche of uh, like trade show work or probably, probably neither of those. I am not interested in touring and I wouldn't be able to fool Penn and Teller. So I enjoy, you know, there's a, there's plenty of work here in the Pacific Northwest that I really don't need to go anywhere else. I agree. Uh, Minneapolis, I'm not sure what it's like there over there, but uh, Minneapolis is the home of 3M, Target Corporation, Best Buy, General Mills, Pillsbury, um, Medtronic, Cargill, a lot of corporate here. So yeah, that's kind of where I, I hadn't it. realized that. Yeah. Wow. There's, there's a, there's a quite a bit of court. Well, we're, we're Minneapolis, St. Paul, the Mississippi river flows through here and it kind of originated in Minnesota. So that's where a lot of stuff happens. You know, the, the general mills is the, the mills <laughs> oh. where, the, where the water is turning the mills and all that stuff. So. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. But you've got Starbucks over there and we've got Microsoft and Boeing. Well, right now Boeing's <laughs> not doing so well, but hopefully it bounces back. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I had a, a, a gig, and the situation was that at first it was a big celebration. So I had to do this big presentation with their logo and everything, implementing their logo into it. And it turned out that the company was downsizing. So it wasn't such a big celebration anymore. So we got together and sort of brainstormed on idea. I'm assuming you do some of that stuff too, sort of consult with them on how they should do the vibe. Sure. Of and it turned out there was a woman that was still with the company, had been there from the very beginning, and she was about to retire. So they changed it into a retirement party for her. And I did a, you know, the out to lunch effect? Yes. It was like that with their logo. I did a big giant business card with her name on it. And then she turned it around and signed her name on the card and it changed, you know, that she was now retired. So the card changed. Oh, that's cool. You got to keep that. So we had to change the whole vibe of it from a depressing downsizing to a celebration of this person. And that, That's a great, great way to change perspective and do that. Well, that's what I really think is cool about the magic. So if anybody's listening to this and they're over on the, the west side of the northern northwest, you have some thought to implementing magic into your event because it's magic. You can do anything with it because it's magic. True. And I do like customizing the magic that I do. And I found that actually with my online shows, I'm able to do that even easier. I've got several routines where like if I get a picture of the special person in advance or a logo or something that appears, I can use people's names and the company name in some fun and unexpected ways. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. They, uh, it's unfortunate that right away when you say I'm a magician, they think, oh, kitty birthday party, you'd be fun. You'd you wear those big shoes and the, the nose and stuff too. And it's like, no, 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 you don't hear me. I'm a magician. <laughs> right. A lot of times they, they, they put you in a little box of the kitty birthday party, unfortunately, but they don't realize that, uh, you know, there's David Copperfields and David Blaine's and Siegfried and Roy's and all that kind of stuff. Think bigger. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And everyone has their own personality and their own style too. Oh, definitely. That's uh, like some people in the magic community, they're concerned about, you know, using an effect that another performer is using, but you got a whole different person that's using it. It can be a whole new thing. And even coming back the next year, people don't retain exactly what happened. And when you get different people and the audience coming up for different reasons, the show is totally different, even though, it was kind of the same. I mean, if musicians can repeat music, why can't magicians repeat magic? <laughs> yep. Anytime I get the chance to perform with another magician, I do find out what routines they're doing just so that yeah. we don't both happen to be doing even a rope trick, even though rope tricks are totally different, but that way the audience gets a completely different experience. Yep. Definitely a good idea. So do you ever, do you ever do like the comedy club circuit? No, that's something that I have not hasn't really been my forte. I thought about it, but it's a tough one. You know, it's that late night stuff. Motel room is by yourself, low paying. So that's why I went Smoky to environment. Party. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of stuff. You don't want to do that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, very cool. 
You know, I try and keep these kind of tight so that people can consume them all. And what happens with this now is I'll take it and beam it up to YouTube and then propagate it on some social media. And then I use those keywords and things. And I'll try and push the stuff over towards your west side region so that if someone's seeing it, it's more relevant. Cool. And I'm looking forward to being part of your, uh, as a visitor to your virtual event that's coming up for event planners. So I will see you virtually down the road. Yeah, you know, on that note, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I used to have, I still have this uh, event planner expo. That's how I got my gigs, is I created a trade show for event planners and they would come there looking for resources like limousines and florists and decorators and staging and hotels and casinos. And yeah, that's one magician smart. there, that was me. <laughs> so that was my lead generator for many years. And I just finished it last March. And then the pandemic thing happened on the 12th and everything well, kind of stopped all events. So we used to do this thing called Synergy First Thursdays where we'd socialize and get together at a happy hour or an activity or something. And that all stopped too. So I've reignited it and I've decided to do the hybrid. We'll do it online until we can be in person and then we'll do both. <laughs> so that's how it Well, cool. I, I'm definitely going to stop by and check it out. Very good. And maybe you might want to be on it as a maybe. guest too. Because the way that I'm doing this is, you know, Thursday, it's 24 hour day. <laughs> so there's, there's room in all there to be able to. Do I something. noticed that. You could step in and, you know. Yeah. Um, even the idea of being live, maybe you set up a camera and we watch your show. <laughs> Who knows? That's the something. cool, that's the cool thing about virtual shows that can it totally is. be done. It is. Like I'm in my home studio right now. Yeah. Hey, if you'll hang on a little bit after this, uh, we could have a little chat, but I'm going to sign this one off and beam it up to the universe. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Jeff. Appreciate your time. Peace. Thank you. Thanks, Brad.